So what is the difference between a python and a boa? This is a question I get asked more than anything about general snake knowledge and today we're going to go over the differences and similarities and what makes a boa a boa and a python a python. I'm Adam, you're watching Wiccans Wicked Reptiles, stick around. duration of the video I'm gonna speak in generalities because although a lot of these things I'm gonna say work for 90% of pythons or 90% of boas there are exceptions always so instead of getting roasted in the comment section below I'm gonna preface this with most of the time boas are this and most of the time pythons are okay let's get into it boas generally are viviparous or ovoviviparous and I might be butchering the pronunciation but basically, I didn't know there was a difference until I started researching this video. I just thought they were interchangeable words. But viviparous means that it's live birth, like for real live birth. It, there's no eggs inside. They don't lay eggs. That's what viviparous means. Ovoviviparous means that they have eggs inside of them, which then hatch and the babies come out of them. So it looks like live birth to you. Uh, just as an observer, it would look exactly the same. And then pythons are oviparous, which just means that they lay eggs most of the time. There are two exceptions. Two boas are, that fit into the boa family that do lay eggs. Uh, they're both types of sand boas. So the Mueller sand boa is one of them, and then the Arabian sand boa lays eggs also. So these are different, and although they look very similar to, say, a Kenyan sand boa, they look similar, but Kenyan sand boas they give live birth or they don't have eggs whereas these two types of sand boas they do lay eggs but generally with a boa constrictor whoop there goes the babies just right out of her you know it takes a few hours a lot of the times they are in these uh, embryonic sacs a lot of the times um, I, I've seen a lot of video of a rainbow boa and she's kind of going around and making sure the sacs are all burst so that these animals can start to breathe which is really cool now the mothering kind of stops there most of the time for boas with pythons because they lay eggs they've got to make sure that those eggs incubate so a lot of the times a female python uh, Burmese python ball python reticulated python whatever will go get super warm in the Sun come lay on their eggs to warm them up and also to protect them as well which is why if you have a python that you're breeding and you try to take away the eggs that might be a very upset mama she might try to strike and huss and hoof at you but I mean just protected her babies so that's one of the main differences between someone like Pikachu who is a ball python and someone like Franny who is a constrictor she's a BCI and then the geography is something too uh, because most of the time pythons are from the old world what I mean by old world is Asia Africa uh, Australasia so like Australia that is generally where you're gonna find pythons now there are exceptions of course with boas you're gonna find them mostly in the new world so South America Central America for the most part uh, and then Caribbean islands things like that but there are exceptions to those as well uh, for example you'll find sand boas <laughs> in Africa Kenyan sand boas come from Kenya which is part of Africa so there are of course you know uh, places where you're gonna find them where they don't belong but that is generally you know old world new world that's how you can tell them apart. Something else that's different about them is heat pits. Now, you're gonna see a close-up of Pikachu's face. He's got these pits in his face. He's gonna use these for hunting, basically. They're heat pits, they sense heat. So they eat warm-blooded mammals most of the time, pythons, and they're gonna use these pits to seek out these animals. Now, you're not gonna see pits in boa constrictors. Boas do not have pits in their face, and not all pythons do either, but some pythons have pits and no boas have pits. Something else that can be different about them is size as well. This is more of a similarity than anything else because boas and pythons generally get pretty big or can get pretty big because there's a bunch of different types of species, right? You're never going to see a 20 foot ball python. That just is not going to happen. Uh, this is a, you know, four and a half, five foot ball python and he's a male. So he's pretty much topped out. He's not going to get much larger than he is right now. So the longest snake in the world is a python. A reticulated python is the longest snake in the world ever recorded. Uh, but the heaviest bodied snake is an anaconda, which is a boa. So there's no pythons are bigger than boas. Like that doesn't exist, right? Boa constrictors or, or BCIs, they can get up to eight feet. I mean, they can get bigger, but it's really uncommon. Uh, where with pythons like Burmese pythons, they can get rather large too. They're gonna get, they're gonna outgrow a BCI most of the time. But if you want a smaller python or a smaller boa constrictor, you can get that too. 
For example, sand boas, uh, Kenyan sand boa we'll use as an example, they stay really, really small. We're talking like two, sometimes up to three feet if you get a big one, but uh, generally very small in males, like a foot and a half sometimes. Where with pythons, pygmy pythons, they stay pretty small too. So it just really depends on what it is that you want. Uh, rosy boa is another great option if you want a boa that's small. They stay, you know, three feet, something like that. Now we can get into some similarities, what makes them very similar and why a lot of people will say, ah, oh, that's a cool ball python, as I show a picture of Freddy the boa on the screen, right? They both can have spurs. So, for example, Pikachu has spurs. He's a male. And this is kind of an evolutionary thing where they don't, they were once limbs, or that's what's thought of, that's the theory, and now they use them for mating, so they can kind of, uh, tickle the female let's say or try to position themselves in a mating type position so that they can lock uh well keeping it you know pg here and i've seen them use them <laughs> that's that's what they do uh he has a girlfriend medusa and, and they produce babies before which come from eggs because they are pythons both boas and pythons are constrictor type snakes which means to kill their prey they suffocate them well actually that's not true they stop their heart but that's what a lot of people think is they suffocate them. They're going to constrict around with every breath that you take out. They squeeze tighter so you can't breathe in again until eventually all the blood to your heart stops. And you are dead and then they will swallow you whole. And they'll do that by taking their jaws and kind of walk each side along because they, you know, like they move independently each side of their jaw. And that's how boas and pythons eat which means that neither of them are venomous of course so you're never gonna have to worry about dying if you get bit by one of these things unless they constrict you because they think you're food and that's i mean like a retic maybe or an anaconda because i mean i don't think that pikachu here is gonna kill anyone anytime soon and generally both are nocturnal. I think this goes for all species. If I'm wrong, put it in the comment section below, but I'm pretty sure that all pythons and boas are nocturnal. So they hunt at night, they're active at night. I mean, they'll go out to bask and or to get uh, heat so that they can, you know, be warm because they can't produce their own heat. Both of them are ectotherms, of course, which means they can't produce their own heat like a human would or a monkey or a dog. And in an effort not to make this video 25 minutes long, uh, smooth scales is the other thing that I think is really cool. And some people really overlook. Like I do a lot of videos on the channel about hognose snakes, which have a keeled scale, right? These guys have a smooth scale. So they feel smooth. They can have like an iridescence. The two best examples in pythons, a Boland's python has a really wicked iridescence. It looks amazing. Uh, and then for uh, boa constrictors or boas, uh, rainbow boas, especially Brazilian rainbow boas have a crazy iridescence to them, um, which means that under a certain type of light, it looks almost like a rainbow, which is very, very cool in my book. Can you time in a knot? Can you time in a bow? That's it. Oh, also they can both be handcuffs, by the way, which is kind of cool. If you like this video and you like other videos like it, put it in the comment section below, hit subscribe, hit like, and if you have an idea that you want to be made into a video, put it in the comment section. That's where I got the idea from this video. And because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Monday.